Okay, so this is a tricky one and a bit of a touchy subject, but let's try and make sense of this. So hello everyone. Now, what really is goth music and why are people so uptight about it? So what are the facts? What do we know? Well, goth music emerged from the post-punk scene in mid to early 1970s Britain. And that's about where the facts end and it gets a little bit gray from there on out and some of the biggest bands that shifted from that time over towards the goth music style uh the ones we've all heard of susie and the banshees the cure sisters of mercy joy division and bauhaus now part of the problem comes from the fact that these bands started in the 70s but goth itself didn't really take off it was a music genre, but it didn't take off bigger until the, the sort of mid 80s. That's when you got the goth clubs, goth fashion, the whole goth subculture started to take off. And that point onwards is kind of where the whole idea of what is or isn't goth music began to become a little bit more muddied. So as early as the 1980s, you've got some bands that people still cite today as being goth that are slowly starting to take a bit of a turn from what you might call the originals or the pioneers. So you're looking at the cult, alien sex fiend, sex gan children and fields of Nephilim. Now, as we know, music draws heavily influences from bands and artists that came before it in the past. Even as little as 10 years, new bands start coming along that have major influences from earlier acts but are themselves really changing the formula. So you're looking at bands now starting to emerge onto the scene like Him, Evanescence, and Typo Negative. All three quite different from each other, yet arguably still seen by a lot of people as included in the whole goth music umbrella. But at the same time, you've got bands branching off from the same roots, but into a different area, more of an industrial or a metal type direction so you're looking at bands like ministry ramstein nine inch nails and marilyn manson now where things really start to get contentious is coming from especially bands like marilyn manson and nine inch nails you're looking at newer groups black veil brides and quite a sticking point motionless in white and i've mentioned marilyn manson and motionless in white they're two of the biggest issues among people in the goth and alternative community about whether or not they kind of constitute goth music. So why are goths and alt people so picky about this sort of thing? Why is it such a problem? Because there really is an issue. So to kind of begin to answer that question, you have to remember where goth and the whole idea of goths and alternative culture came from it's a subculture that was born of the post-punk movement so you've got punks rebels anti-disestablishmentarianism feeling there and i think part of the issue is they just wanted to be different so as soon as you start pigeonholing these people or putting them in groups with mainstream bands and artists there's going to be some pushback. I think even more so if these groups start to play on the idea that they could be goth or alternative when you've got a, a decent amount of people on one side saying they are and a decent amount of people on the other side saying they're not. A lot of people will see that as an easy sellout for a shock rock group, for instance to whack on a load of makeup and start doing crazy stuff with their looks because some people would argue that it detracts away from their music and their style and well their musical style and they're making it more about their physical style and how they look but that's not really the issue i think the problem is more so with modern modern goths and people in the alternative subculture. And I think part of the problem is 
a lot of them are just very, well, non-conformist. So when a group starts to build up that high level of popularity, so say for instance, take one of the more mainstream one, one of the one of the more recent mainstream ones, Motionless in White, for instance, it, they're going to be more popular with the younger crowd because that's just how music works. <laughs> Got soundproofing falling off all over the place, but. Some of those who were kind of, you've got the earlier, we're talking people perhaps born in the late 80s, early 90s, maybe rolling into the 2000s, aren't really gonna be as eager to accept a group like Black Veil Brides or Motionless in White into the fold as such. Because a lot of these people who have this protective nature over there, their subculture because it's their goth of course it's their goth you're the first person to ever do it but their protective nature over that is gonna make them gatekeep for want of a better word in some way and i'm not saying this is everyone that does this but some people are and i think that's part of where the problem lies right we mentioned them it's time for the big question manson motionless in white are they goth? This is a question that comes up a lot in this sort of community and the goth subculture. And I would say perhaps the majority of the time the answer is no, but I can't answer that. And I know it's a little bit of a cop out, you know, are they goth, are they not? I'm not really gonna answer, but what I can say is, I don't think it matters because what was goth music has changed. I don't think anything ever was particularly goth music. I don't think goth was ever a genre of music. I think it was heavily influenced by certain styles of music, which have come to be known as things like gothic rock and gothic metal and industrial metal. But I don't think goth ever really existed in the same way that you can't say that metal as a genre exists because what was once considered metal is now only a tiny portion of a huge sea. You've got heavy metal, black metal, dark metal, thrash metal, death metal. The list goes on, it's endless. All these different types. And the way I would argue it is that not too long ago, there probably still is people now that would say that band's not metal. The only metal bands are Metallica and Pantera. I mean, it's an archaic way of looking at it. Why isn't that translated over to the way we look at goth music? I think to boil it down to its most simplistic form, goth music and the music goths listen to are not the same thing. So I'll explain, goth music, is late 70s, early 80s, electro pop rock that dealt with themes of sadness, existentialism, nihilism, all of the stuff that we come to stereotype goths as being into, but it's changed. I think a lot of goths and alternative people have opened their eyes to industrial, more metal, and kind of synth wave, dark wave type stuff. So, I mean, that's my take on it. Goth music doesn't really exist anymore, but the music goths listen to has changed and will continue to change. So if you agree with me, let me know. If I've riled you up and this has really annoyed you and you wanna vent your frustrations, let me know, I do read them. It's, it's interesting to see so many people's different takes. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye bye.